Hi guys, today I made this char-grilled salmon with red pepper and hazelnut salsa and it was so easy and delicious and it was really healthy as well, totally worth doing. Especially if you might be trying to lose weight at the moment. Start off by eyeballing 15 grams of hazelnuts. This bag weighs 100 grams so I'm trying to work out 15% of it. These are blanched nuts. If yours aren't, I'll show you how to deal with that later but for now, transfer to a preheated oven at 220 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. While they're roasting, take two good red peppers and quarter them and de-seed them and cut off the stems and ribs and just leave them until the nuts are done. Once the nuts have a good colour, add them to a bowl. If you were using unblanched nuts, wait till they're cool and rub them between your palms until the skins come off them. Now set them aside to cool. Add the peppers to the same tray you roasted the nuts in. Drizzle over roughly two tablespoons of olive oil and add a good pinch of sea salt flakes. Toss them about to lightly coat them in oil and salt and then transfer back to the oven for 20 minutes. In the meantime, once the hazelnuts have cooled, give them a very coarse chop. Then add them back to the bowl along with the rest of the salsa ingredients. Here the recipe calls for 15 grams of chopped chives but the ones in my garden were dead and I had no fresh ones in the supermarket so I'm using about 2 tablespoons of dried chives. Add about 4 tablespoons of olive oil, 2 tablespoons of cider vinegar, now zest a lemon with a microplane grater. When doing this you just want the outer layer of the skin, you don't want any of the white pith underneath. Then add it to the salsa along with the juice of that lemon. Make sure you get out all those little lemon pits though because they have a seriously pungent taste. If you bite into them, they're so gross, they'll ruin it. Next, take a clove of garlic and peel it. And you can either crush it and finely mince it if you like, but seeing as I have the microplane grater out anyway, I'm just gonna grate it really, really finely. Once that's done, just add it to the bowl with the rest of the salsa ingredients. Then give it a good stir while you wait until the peppers are ready to take out of the oven. And then just let them cool until they're ready to handle. Then pour all the tray juices into the salsa and then go about peeling the peppers. This proved too fiddly for me, I couldn't be bothered with it so I skipped straight to the next step where I just diced them up really, really small to half a centimetre dice. Add them to the salsa and then give them a mix up and set them aside until the salmon is ready. This can actually be made a day in advance if you like. I would taste it though just to check for seasoning before you put it away. To cook the salmon, heat a griddle pan over a high heat for a few minutes to let it get really really hot. As it's heating, line a baking tray with a sheet of parchment. And drizzle your salmon fillets with a little bit of olive oil. I'm actually using rapeseed oil here, but really any vegetable oil will be fine. Brush that oil in and then sprinkle a little pinch of sea salt flakes over the salmon fillets, followed by a little pinch of cracked black pepper. Once the griddle pan is really, really hot, lay the salmon fillets on top, skin side up, and leave them cook for about three minutes. Once they've had three minutes cooking, take a fish slice and Quickly but firmly remove them from the grill pan and set them onto your roasting tray, skin side down. Then place back in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for 5 to 8 minutes. Then just plate up and spoon your salsa over your salmon and dig in and enjoy. This really is such a healthy recipe and a really good way of including more vegetables into your diet, more oily fish. It's perfect. Thanks really for watching guys, I hope you liked this video and this recipe, if you did be sure to hit the like button below and the subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can check me out on social media as well, you'll find all the links to my accounts in the description below as well as the link to my blog where you'll find this full recipe at www.rookiecook.org.